Hello, YouTube. It's an end. Welcome back to Attack of the B Team with Kankadia. And it took us a little while, and I've got a little bit of an issue here. I'm not sure what's causing it, really. But we have our first Ent. So, let me show you what happens when I hit this thing with my broadsword. And it will attack me either way, so I might as well hit myself. I try not to hit the... Oh, it sets him on fire. Good to know. So I'm not doing much damage at all. In fact, he's wrecking me. In fact, I need to run... I really am going up against an Ent with no armor on. Okay, I just uh, re-enabled Keep Inventory because I just realized we had an, an update to the mod pack. So, this thing is not very affected by a sword, even one that has... Oh, I, I forgot to put sharpness on this thing. Oh well, I'll get on, I'll get to, I'll get to get into it in just a minute, but if you use an axe on this thing, it should do quite a bit more damage. Boom, boom, room. The ants are going to war. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> so, uh, like I was saying before, I'm having a little bit of an issue here. I'm not quite sure what's causing it. Oh, not this isn't the issue. That's just the spider. This is the issue. Look, okay, now see this tree here? What's wrong with this picture? Okay, get out of here. Hit you with my shovel and my axe. Okay, what's wrong with this picture is that there is no wood here. There's no wood. And right, oh, wait, there is a piece of wood. Okay, now it's working. That is so weird. Huh. Oh, wait, so that, that one's still there. So, what happened was, I actually had to make a, a, a sickle out of some spare peridot I have, because the, the leaves weren't doing the fast despawn they've been doing for a while, because uh, other trees are all around here. I had no idea why that is. Oh well. So I was wondering what, what, what was causing it, it seemed like it's not happening all the time, so... Hmm. Okay, so this is actually fine for now. Um, I, as you may remember in my PDB Horizons game, I always have to watch the ground after an end comes by because it hits the ground with bone meal, and it dropped the muscle. How does an end have muscle? But that's another point, another thing. Um, and but in the PDB Horizons game, they also have Pam's Harvest Craft, which which allows for um, many different things to be grown, including saplings for driven trees. And if you hit the ground with bone meal, you can get those saplings. So if, when an end comes by, he hits the ground with bone meal all around him, so he can uh, get saplings to come up. But in my case, all I had was the uh, glintweed and the ember moss from witchery, and I've got uh, now a bunch of tall grass, which actually I think helps my altar. So this thing might be taking a little bit of a boost in power, for all I know. But then I cut, the, I cut down all the trees also, so that probably worked against it. Okay, how did... Okay. Ugh. Hang on a second. Don't worry, Elizabeth, I got him. How in the hell did he spawn? It's probably right up on the corner. I don't have any torches on that little area there. Okay, so, um, speaking of Feed the Beast Horizons, uh, some of you may or may not know, probably not, actually, um, I recently ended my first season of Feed the Beast Horizons a little earlier than I had anticipated with episode 18, and um, I had a number of reasons for doing this, but mostly it was because of this, because of Attack of the Bee Team. I found I was finding that, uh, A, I was hitting a number of walls with... Um, Feed Beast Horizons, specifically with what I, what, what I wanted to do with it, which was the magical mods, Thaumcraft, Ars Magica 2, Arcane Scrolls, and Witchery. And I didn't know what to do in Thaumcraft. I kind of never really learned how to, how to use the, 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 the research minigame. Ars Magica 2, I really didn't know where to go. I, I wasn't sure how, how, what the, what the mid-game was all about. And uh, Arcane Scrolls is just kind of useful, but also not useful at the same time. And, um, the main thing was that as a witchery, I found I was doing the same thing here in Attack of the B team that I was doing in in the in the Feed the Beast Horizons game. And I don't really like going back over the same territory twice. It's just not that necessary for me, especially not in in a Let's Play scenario. 
So I thought about it for a while, and I decided to end my end my, my first season of Feed the Beast Horizons. But I also realized that I really wanted to bring my, my witchery setup from PDB's Horizons into witchery. So I'm going to go into creative mode. I'm going to update this whole quadrant to basically was basically the same as it, as it, as it was in my PDB's Horizons game. So I'll be back in a minute. <sighs> okay, so I think that's about it. I think this is pretty much exactly what I had in my, in my uh, Feed the Beast Horizons uh, witchery quadrant. So I've got an altar here with a candelabra and a filled chalice that is with redstone soup on the inside. It's got about the same power level, about 3,500. Not fully, definitely not fully upgraded. I've got uh, two levels of, cir of circle with a heart glyph. I've got uh, trees all alongside it, oak, hawthorn, alder, and rowan. I have a kettle over here. Now I'm not using an aqueous accumulator in this case because I don't really need it. I just have a portable tank to refill the kettle. I have uh, two upgraded that they're with the um, with charge attuned stones, uh, filtered fume funnels for my witch's oven. I have a distillery, I ha and I have a brewing stand. So this is pretty much the same setup here. Oh, and I also gave myself a couple extra items too. So in here I have a complete set of the witchcraft books. And I've got four graspers, which I made before. I've got four critter snares that I also made. 16 uh, ender bramble. I've got some golden chalk and some ritual chalk here. And I've also made myself an enchanted broom. Still sort of getting the hang of flying with this thing. I, de I definitely would like to uh, move into getting a um, an owl familiar. I think that's a better way to fly with it. This thing corners like a truck. But, ah well. Actually, you know what? That's not a bad idea for today. Uh, I, I've, I've looked into the Ender Dragon. I have. I'm, I'm, I now have my enchanted broom. Let's see if I can land this thing without crashing into a tree somewhere. Oh, nope. I hit the tree. There we go. Oh. What? Okay, see, the spider I can understand, but where the heck did he come from? Oh, you know what? I bet he dropped off that thing. Oh well. So yeah, I, I, I experimented with, with the broom. I experimented with uh, riding uh, Elizabeth, the Ender Dragon. I wonder what else kinds of methods of flying that I, I can use to experiment with before I go all the way to the stars and to, beyond them to the moon. This is Kanakadia, test flight number one, with his stylish new glitched out hang glider. And Geronimo! Oh, wow. I'm not, I'm not touching the keys at all. This is just flying me. I'm at a gently descending arc, and I think I'm going to clear the wall. Let's see. Yep. Okay, I'm going to avoid this palm tree here. I wonder if I can drop quicker than this. But let's see. Okay, I'm going to hit this tree. And... Touchdown! Okay, so, so you, you click... You click I, I just made a uh, hang glider from open blocks. And how you do it is you click once to, to open it. It is, you can see it all around you. You jump off things to sort of, sort of slow descend. Uh, I think this is, this is similar to the way that you slow descend when you, when you uh, morph into a chicken, but not exactly the same. And you right click again to, to, to fold it back into yourself. But yeah, that, that's only good for descending though. And the only way to descend we want to do is going to be down from uh, the, the moon down into Earth. So what other ways can we experiment with? Well, okay, we already experimented with uh, bat form. There, there's there's that there's that option, but I don't think I can get, get quite that high. Hmm. So what else can I do? Aha! I got it. I can use Archimedes ships. I can make a balloon. I can fly as high as I want. Okay. So I'm gonna need this. Uh, I know I need a, a shore buffer first. Make the before I make the base, so it won't connect to the building. That's gonna need a floater and an ink sack. Then so what's a floater? Is a oak wood and a wool. 
Okay, so I need some wool for that. Okay, so I can make an air balloon. Need string and more wool. I know I have a lot of string, but how much wool do I have? Crap. Hmm. Okay, well, I think Archimedes ships is, is definitely one, one, one thing I want to explore next. Unfortunately, I can't really do it right now because I don't have any wool. And why don't I have any wool? Because I only rate how I have two. Actually, but let me check. Let me count them. One, two. One, two. <laughs> what, 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 what? Oh, sorry. I was counting sheep there. Okay. Yep. One, two, three sheep. That's it. Okay, so this is going to be a problem. And how do we fix this problem? With science. <laughs> Mad science. Hmm. Okay, so here's my idea. And uh, bear with me. Uh, if you've been watching other Attack of the B-Team uh, Let's Plays, and you probably have, and you've most likely seen this, this layout somewhere else. It really is the most efficient way of making an animal farm. But it's my first time, so bear with me a little bit. Here is what I'm thinking. I'm going to make a extra cruelty animal farm. You know, like some of them have like, you know, cage-free, cruelty-free uh, livestock. This is going to be extra cruelty. <laughs> How so? Well, I'm, for one thing, I'm going to uh, box the animals in and all these little cages here. So, the, in principle, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put a breeder... No, sorry, that's wrong. I'm going to put a breeder... Uh, that is a machine from uh, from uh, Mine Factory Reloaded here on this block here, and then I'm and then I'm going to put. Actually, I'm not sure if it goes on the second block or first block. I look I look that up. Put a block here. Put a chronotyper here. That is a transferring of of uh, babies from one side to the other. So we'll pick all the babies after they're bred and move them into this pen, and then on this side. I'm going to put a grinder, so it's going to, uh, once the babies are grown, kill them and drop all their stuff into a chest or item system, which is going to run the length of this uh, enclosure. So, sounds simple enough, but the trick is going to be scaling it. So, essentially, you're going to need, uh, I want to separate them, so I'm going to put, you know, cows, chickens, pigs, uh, sheep, and if, if I can manage it, wolves in all of this. And I think I have just enough space for, for all that stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to build one of these things, and then I'm, I'm going to sort of scale it off camera. So f first thing, we need to make some machines. So I'm going to get some materials together and be right back. Hmm. Okay, so this plan of mine is a little more expensive than I thought it was going to be. So here, here's what here's the, here's the lowdown. I want, what I'm going to need. First things first, I'm going to need to make a precision sledgehammer. That's easy enough to make. I've, I've been um, farming some rubber trees, at, some MFR rubber trees out in my um, orchard for quite some time. You take the, take the MFR rubber, and I think you put it through, and you put it through a, um, a furnace, uh, the rubber bars, and you put it back through, I believe. So let me grab just, I only need three right now, so let me just grab three, put them into here. And this should... What am I doing wrong? Okay, so what you do is you take the raw plastic, which has been processed, put it in there, then you get plastic sheets. And I need three plastic sheets to make a precision sledgehammer. Always useful to have the weapon, uh, the, the, the tool of the system in hand to move stuff around. Okay, now we get to the, the more expensive part. Okay, uh, first off, we have the breeder. Not too bad, actually. The machine frame, golden apple, and two golden carrots. I've got tons of uh, gold. I can definitely make that, no, no problem. Purple dye, I think I can make that without too much difficulty. That, that's a lapis and something else. Maybe lapis and rose red. Uh, next, I'm going to need grinders. Uh, that requires tin gears. A redstone reception coil, a machine frame, and an invar sword. Not too hard, because as I think I had some leftover, in, leftover invar uh, from a while back, so that shouldn't be a problem. However, the chronotyper requires three emeralds apiece, and I'm going to need to eventually make five of these things. So I need to get 15 emeralds, and right now I only have two. So I have to go and do some mining. So I'll be back in a minute, and I'm back. Okay, so after about an hour or so of mining, I only managed to get 
six emeralds bring my total to eight so not nearly enough so i came over here to our southern water um, village which i have not yet uh, fixed up to do a little bit of trading and see what i can i can get here so that's 10 emeralds all right enter not a very good deal i i went back went back here before and i looked around and some of these guys had some good deals including at least one farmer who was uh selling wheat and this guy here Okay, so seven punji sticks and spruce barricades. That was it for two ore bear bushes. I actually want that. So let me just use the uh, crafting table here. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was spruce or what. So let's make... How many was it again? 18? So yeah. Oh, I didn't bring enough. Shoot. Oh, well. So I, I make two. And I, I did bring a punji stick, though. So I can make at least one of these deals. Cool. So I get two more orbit bushes. But I, th I think I think I even make more more than one deal. Here. Oh wait, no. He, he's got the particles, so you have a second deal. He's got landmine and a punji stick for gold. Uh, landmines. I I I, need, I know you need um blank cast in order to make that. I can't make that off the top of my head right now. Ah, well. So, that's cool. I got, I got a couple more, a couple orberry bushes, and I guess I've already cleaned out that, that particular thing. And will you guys stop opening and closing the doors? Stop. Stop. Oh, he's the one with a good deal. Okay, so let me go over here. Now, he wants a written book, and apparently that is, uh, according to the NEI, a plastic sheet a book and redstone. Yeah, three eight seven. That's the same item code. So let's take a look. Yep. Okay, not giving. Oh, he's, he's, he's giving me the particles. See what he says next. Twenty seven paper for that. Okay, I don't actually have that, but I think I can do a couple more of these. Let me make a couple. Be right back. Okay, so now I've got 13 emeralds. Not too bad. So let's go and find a farmer that I saw before. Where is he? This him? You make... Okay, no. Uh, I don't really want to risk a bad deal right now. I don't have enough emeralds to, to uh, invest with scared money. But I know somewhere... I saw a farmer. Somewhere... I saw a farmer... And he had a deal that was pretty good. Pretty good. Let's just max out this guy, see how much more we can get out of him before he close close his shop. Okay, uh, that's all I brought with me, unfortunately. I'm just curious what his, what his next deal is. Could, yep, there's particles. And it's closed, so he gives us that four. Ooh, you know what? Yes, because I don't actually. I'm pretty sure I don't actually have any melons, so I'm gonna do that deal. There's actually another another guy who who, who had a um a deal that there was there was uh, one emerald for three. Oh, it's refresh itself. Oh wait, wait, I forgot about that. I actually brought spare. Hello there. I am turning weed and emerald, weed and emerald, weed and emerald. This guy doesn't know how much I love emerald. He just loves wheat. Oh, he's full. Okay, let's see what he's got. So, uh, that's not a good deal, but I think I can do this deal again to get that back. Let's see. Two. Now I have to do this one? Oh. You know what? It's a bad deal. But I can get 20. Yeah, I'll just break even at that point. So, no, it's not worth it. I mean, you might have a new one that might be pretty good, but I can't risk it. Okay, so I think that was... Oh, blub, blub, blub. All right, so I think that's about it. So I, I, got, I came with my barricades and punji sticks and the weird book. And cool. So now I have enough emeralds to make, make chronotypers. 
Okay, so I am definitely out of time for this episode, but I just want to show you this uh, not non-functioning, but uh, pretty much in a, in, a, in a final form um, a animal pen. This is our Extra Cruelty Animal Farm from Mine Factory Reloaded, and it's basically the ones you've seen all over the place. So I've got a, a grinder over here, which, which uh, grinds over here in, in a radius. If you should if you use a precision sledgehammer, it shows you where it, where it affects. So it affects this entire square here. And uh, it, it will kill anything here that's an, that's an adult, and it will, put, it, will, it will send all the items out through the back here, which I'm going to connect to an item duct. I believe it works through TE systems, so I'm not totally sure about that. I'll have to find out. In the middle here, I have a chronotyper, which is going to move the babies from here in the breeding area over here to the killing area. I am pretty sure the, the chronotyper does not require power, so I don't think I'll have to run cable to that, but I will have to run cable for the... For the, for the uh, the grinder again. I know. I know that the MFR accepts uh, TE power. I'm just going to have to figure out a way to run um, uh, leadstone energy conduit all the way from my magma dynamos on, over there to over here. I am playing around with the idea of moving my um, my, my magma system from over on the, on the northern module into the center, but I'm not sure if I'll do that. We'll see. So over here, and this is kind of odd actually. Over here, I've got. The, I got the breeder. Now, I believe I have this in the right position. Yes, I do. Because it, I mean, it's showing me this green square here. So I believe that the ones with the love, the heart, uh, that is, are the, are the ones, are, are the directions in which it will uh, affect the mobs in the area. So they will affect all around. So I have to move it just one block in, put some fencing around so mobs can't get out. And But but it does have to be continuously fed with wheat, which actually presents not, that's another problem. Uh, I have two rows of wheat over here in my garden. However, this is not going to hold up uh, a, 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 to this kind of um, agricultural automation. So I'm going to have to make my first external structure uh, on my base here. I'm going to build over here an automated wheat farm. I should be able to do it fairly easily with, with MFR. Um, I may do it on the next episode or I might do it off camera. Either, either way. So, uh, this, this has been Kankadia for Attack of the B Team and uh, I'm going to do that. So, see you next time.